Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> uh, this is a drill. Uh, this is one of Tamiya's uh, handy drills. Um, and there's a bit of a story here, so settle in, folks. Um, so, I haven't been around much lately, you may have noticed, for one reason or another. Uh, but various people have been um, helping me out. And uh, so one of the primary architects of that assistance, shall we say, is my very dear friend Bunny Kitten of Bunny Kitten Builds, who I've done some collaborations with recently. Um, and she has been riding me, stop laughing at the back, to get back into the swing of things. Uh, a bit of gentle prodding, shall we say. Um, <laughs> to the extent that uh, I actually came up with an idea the other day for a project. Uh, actually, it was an idea I had a long time ago, and I was reminded of it by one of my patrons. So thank you, Ian, um, for reminding me of it. And uh, that particular project, which hopefully you'll be seeing in, a, in an upcoming video, uh, requires a lot of drilling. And I had spoken to Bunny Kitten uh, about these drills before and I said I you know obviously I've got I've got lots of you know drilling equipment here so it's not like I couldn't drill holes but I've always sort of wanted to try one of these see what they're like and so the next thing I know <laughs> one turns up on the doorstep uh, courtesy of Bunny Kitten so thank you Bunny Kitten love you um, so uh, yes in order to facilitate the upcoming project today we're going to build this so, after all of that, let's open the box and see what we've got. Right, let's see what we have here. Plastic box bags, obviously, but we won't go into that. Um, it's kind of interesting with this thing that you actually have to build it, <laughs> which is kind of comical. Uh, but I'm hoping it's going to be fairly straightforward. Uh, let's have a quick look. So we've got instructions here, all like, oh, rather long instructions. Uh, it actually looks fairly straightforward. So we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, oh, there's a little tube of grease in there. That's useful to grease the gears. So I don't know if this is actually going to work for what I want to do because I'm going to need to use some fairly tiny drill bits and I'm not sure if this is actually going to be able to hold them. Um, but we'll, we'll see. I mean, it'll be, it'll be fun anyway. Um, oh God, does that even have a... Oh, it does. It has a, it has a sticker. So, okay. All right, well, let's, uh, let's get this stuff out of the bag and we'll start looking at putting this thing together. Right, so um, I did actually have an idea because this runs on two AA batteries and I have had an idea, as I'm sure none of you will be surprised to hear, um, of actually running this thing off a rechargeable battery. But uh, I think to start with, I'm going to put it together as is and make sure it all works and everything because I think the way it actually functions it might need a bit of thought about converting it to um, to a, a rechargeable battery. Uh, battery terminals, there they are. Oh, just talk about yourselves for a minute. put these bits in a little pot really because I'm end up losing them. Uh, battery terminal B which is this. So that goes under there and then snaps onto there like that. I love the way on, on the plan they put this this big snap 
and it literally goes on with the, the faintest click. But anyway, <laughs> that's beside the point. Um, battery terminal A, which is this one. And that goes on there like that did not really click on very well. Hang on, there we go. That goes like that. Okay, now the motor and the pinion gear, which is, I'm assuming, this one. So Goes like that, and that, oh, I see. So you've got the two um, contacts uh, here and here, and then obviously you've got the two contacts on the motor, and so they sit on there like that. So you have to kind of pop that under there and then click that into place without snapping all of this there we go that's a good idea certainly saves doing any soldering or anything okay so that's that bit moving on so some of these parts um, are made of different types of plastic so here for example it actually says this is ABS plastic so it's a bit more hard wearing than your normal styrene uh, now we need the sides, the shell as it were, another plastic bag, ho-hum. Now the next thing we want is, oh this, so this is the shaft stopper. Stop laughing at the back. That goes in there like that. Oh I see that goes right through, yeah so that's so you can um, push in to lock the lock the chuck so that you can get it open and then that has this spring over the top which is a, like a return spring and then this goes over the top to hold it in place oh that's going to be interesting getting that in there like that so that then you can see that protruding through. Okay, now what's next? B4. And a 2x8mm screw. Yeah. So just a little note on this, when you're measuring, like if you get something like that where it says two by eight, when you're measuring the screw, the eight mil refers to the length of the thread, not to the overall length of the screw itself, in case you were wondering. So that goes in there. Uh, we need a Phillips screwdriver to do that up. Don't over tighten that because it will pull the threads out. And now that will turn and lock the trigger. Okay, so that's easy enough. Next bit. Uh, okay, so we're now starting to get into the trigger mechanism. So we want number two. And number three. And the trigger. And a bushing. That, that must be the bushing there. All right. A little dab of that on there. I say you don't need a lot because 
it's a tiny little plastic trigger on a drill. It's not a, you know, <laughs> it's not, not a bearing or anything. So that goes in there. I'll give that a little, get the grease going. And we want some grease on here. So that, oh, this is going to be fun. Where's that screw? There it is. And we need this spring and a washer. That's not the right washer. We want that washer. So, that bushing goes in there like that. Actually, let's put this in first, because that has to go over the top of everything. So we want a little bit of grease on here. So what I'm going to do, let's just use a cotton bud to spread that around a bit. There we go. Okay, so that goes in there. Now, this bit. So we want grease in here. Probably not that much. <laughs> Oops, that's way too much grease. But that's all right because we need to put some in here as well. And in here. Okay, so now the bushing goes in. Now this goes, oh, I get grease all over everything now, you watch. Oh, actually, before I put that in, I've just noticed there's a little bit of flashing there. Let's get rid of that, because that is not going to help. Now we can put this in. So that goes over the top of that, over the top of that, and then, so we have the spring, the washer, and the, and the screw. Oh. That goes facing down like that. And now that goes in there. The spring goes in that hole there like that. Let's get that started. And then we can put the spring in the right place. Right, so that goes like that. And now that should do that. Ta da! <laughs> right, okay, so that's that. Right, now this is where we've got to be careful because we need to get the gearing right in here. So, C1, which is this one here. So, cut that, cut that. And then it does specify very clearly in the plans, as it should, 
to make sure that you remove all of any flashing on here because otherwise the gears won't mesh properly. Although they are actually pretty clean. Okay. So we want some grease on here. What you have to remember, whenever you're greasing anything, any grease that squirts out the sides isn't doing anything. It's not helping. All right, that's fine. And now this goes on here like this, and then it has one of these little E-clips to hold it in place. Now, I know for a fact that this e-clip is going to go twang and go off across the room and that's fine uh, <laughs> I do actually uh, I have a I have a tray of e-clips somewhere which may well be making an appearance at some point in this video there we go that's not quite in properly there we go, that's it, that's got it. Whew. Right, one down, <laughs> one to go, or several more to go. Uh, okay, so now we need a three millimeter washer on here. Now this all needs to be greased. So that goes like that. Nice blob of grease on there. Three mil washer. And that goes over the end of there like that. Now, C3, which is this one and this other bearing cap actually this is more of a bushing than a bearing so we need one of these shafts that goes in there and oh, that wants to be greased as well this is going to get really messy now. Pop that like that. And then that goes into there. A bit more grease on the end of here. Like that. And then that goes on the end of there, like that. And now that is part of our gearbox. So now we need to make the other bit. So that's this, because it's the only one left. And another shaft. So that is, I'm assuming, being drawn with greasing. Yes, it is. Oh, there's a big bit of flash on there. Let's get rid of that. Sides all right. OK, 
Okay, now. So that goes in there like that. And this goes in here like that. Wonderful stuff. Okay. Now we need to grease up all the gears. Which is going to be fun because there's not a lot of grease in this thing. Actually, I just realised I put grease on this end bit, and I didn't need on this end one, and I didn't need to. Because <laughs> of course, although actually no, because it will mesh on the pinion gear, won't it? All right. Okay. So next. I'm assuming we're putting in the motor, and yes we are. Right, so we need the switch terminal, and this goes at the bottom here. And basically the way this works is when you pull the trigger and it pulls this bar forwards, that is pushing this up to make the contact on the battery. And this is the reason why I think it's gonna be awkward to, con to convert this to a rechargeable battery. But we'll worry about that at another time. So now we need this bit, which is uh, B1. And that goes over the top to hold this in place. So that goes on all right we need to get that into there push that down I'm going to put a bit of grease on that because that is going to wear out like nobody's business otherwise let's give that a little That's better. And then we want, uh, right, so that doesn't need, the screws for that are the screws that hold the case on. So now we need to get the motor. I'm gonna put some grease on this pinion gear. And then that goes in like this. Uh, oh, I see. So that goes in there and there. This is very well made, I have to say. It's a genius idea. Uh, so, does anything else need to go in before we put the other side on? No, it does not. What we need is this side. And now we can put the other side on and this basically holds everything in place. So yes, I apologize for my little um, <laughs> faux pas with the camera. It's just, uh, I couldn't believe it. I actually went to stop the camera for, for something and uh, it, it had started recording and then stopped. So yeah, anyway, these things happen. At least this is a little bit easier to actually show you where I got to. Now again, don't over tighten these screws because you do not want to rip the 
plastic out of it. So just nip them up. And we'll do this one down here, because you always do our opposites. So it pulls the case together square. Like that. And we'll pop that one in there. And we'll drop this one in here. Yeah, I guess I'm a bit out of practice with this whole filming business. <laughs> oh, God, I can't believe I did that. I say, I don't know if it was actually me forgetting to turn the camera on or whether it just um, it's, it just stopped for some reason. I don't know. Um, but there we go. So there is a little locking mechanism here for the spindle. So there's a, a detent in the spindle that actually this little plunger fits into so that you can lock the spindle to uh, open and close the collet. So let's pop some batteries in this. Now these are just a couple of cheap ones that I got. Made by Kodak apparently, not a sponsor. Pop that in there. Pop that one in there. Like that. And now the last piece we need to fit is the side plate and that basically holds the batteries in place and so that drops in there like that that snaps into there and now and the nice thing is because of the way it's geared it stops the second you let go of the trigger So you then put a collet in. So there are two different sizes of collet depending on what size uh, drill bit you want to use. So we're going to be going for the smaller one and hoping that it's um, sufficiently small that it will do what I want it to do. So basically you see that you can turn the motor with this. So by using this spindle lock locks the spindle and you can tighten this up without the motor turning and then we can drill things the one thing this does not have which is slightly annoying is it doesn't have a reverse um, so but like I said we're gonna give this a go and see I'm gonna clean up some of these little cut marks and things but uh, we'll get a I might have to put the bigger collet in I wonder if that one, off, that drill bit will fit in there. Or not, I don't think it will. No, let's change that collet. Pop that in there. Tighten that down. Hmm. <laughs> I was thinking of suspicion that drill bit might be bent. <laughs> let's take that one out and put a different one in. Uh, let's find a little drill bit to put in there. Right, here are some drill bits. Let's try a one millimeter bit. So I think for this we're going to need the small collet. Hmm. 
right let's get a bit of scrap plastic and see if we can drill a hole in it this will do My daughter's just turned up. Say hello, Katie. Hello, Katie. All right, this does not have a lot of torque. It is drilling, but it's drilling very slowly. Why are you doing a hole in the pot? It's not a pot, it's oh. a pipe fitting, but I'm just using it to... Yeah. To see if the drill works. Oh. Well, it does work, but it doesn't have a lot of gumption. Um, but I think it will do for what I want to do. So, um, yeah, there it is, the Tamiya electric handy drill uh, once again thank you to bunny kitten for sending me this um, and we may be using this on a future project or we may not <laughs> it depends how well it works when it comes down to it uh, but you'll see that in an upcoming video so hopefully you'll stick around for that uh, thank you for all of the people that have stuck with me on patreon through all of this uh, your support is very much appreciated and uh, we'll see you on the next video say goodbye katie Goodbye, Katie. Anyway, we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.